Hey, my lovely Marshall Blenders. How are y'all? I hope everybody's doing good. Happy Sunday. Um, I was having a wonderful conversation with my sister. Um, she's a single mother, and she's raising her beautiful son, my nephew. Um, and she came up with a wonderful word. I've never heard it before, and I think it's a good... Um, sorry, trying to get the camera right. I think it's a good word that describes some parenting. Um, she called it parallel parenting. Parallel parenting. And you guys know what parallel lines are. Parallel, parallel lines are lines that run mm, like this, right? So they never actually touch. They never actually will cross each other. You can cross, to, lines can cross or they can run parallel, which means that they're lines that run adjacent to each other but never ever get to touch each other. And the concept to that is that the mother ha may have one way of wanting to rear the child, the father may have another way of wanting to rear the child. And I mean, we won't limit it to just a mother and father, the parents, I'm gonna use the phrase the parents, may have two different ways of wanting to rear the child. And the way that that can manifest itself um, is the mother wants to, um, let's say, take the kid to Chuck E. Cheese. And the father, may also want to do that but they want to do it on different days right where it, it, I'm going to tell you so for example let's say it's a holiday season or it's the child's uh, birthday or some type of a celebration one of the parents wants to include the other parent into the situation that will be called co-parenting right um, so they try to reach out to the other person. Hey, how can we do this? Let's get this done. And then the other parent wants to do it whenever they want to do it and however they want to do it without discussing it with the other person. So one is co-parenting where you reach out to the other parent and you say, hey, can we get this done together? The other one is parallel parenting where one parent is like, I'm doing my thing and that's it. I don't have to ask you nothing, you know? Um, that made me think it, it, that type of a situation is not exclusive to uh, parents that are no longer together that situation also occurs in a household where it's a nuclear family you know both parents and the child where you can have a co-parenting situation which helps to rear a, a somewhat more stable human being and then you have parallel parenting, which surprisingly enough can also rear a stable human being. Um, the way I would express it is I am a child of a divorced household. Uh, my mother and my father did not stay together after my birth. I have two older sisters and then I was born and then a month later my father was out of the house. My father's a great dad, um, but both my parents did work together in the rearing. If the need for discipline was a little bit beyond what my mother could handle, she was able to call my father. My father was able to come right over, take care of the situation. For those of y'all who know what that means, y'all know what that means, right? I got my butt whooped. And so he could handle the situation. We'd have a conversation. He would go home and everything was fixed. Um, now, parallel parenting would be let's say on the weekends when he had me if he wanted to take us let's say he wanted to go to a party my father loves parties he's got ifuna you know he loves parties um but he would always ask my mom hey we have this and this and this is going to happen i'd like to take the kids is that cool with you she would say i don't want them to go but if you want to take them go for it now parallel parenting would be my father would have us and then just take us without telling my mother and then we'd come home and be like hey yeah we got to go to this party my mother be like wait a minute ain't nobody tell me nothing that would be parallel parenting well that happens in a household where the parents are together you know so that lets me know that sometimes uh, parallel parenting and co-parenting 
can rear wonderful people and can also rear uh, people with issues like normal people have, you know? So my advice to both parties, be you co-parent, if you're co-parenting well, kudos to you. Please keep the lines of communication always open because that is definitely beneficial. For those of you that are parallel parenting, the advice is be realistic, especially if you are a person who wants to co-parent and the other person is um, not cognizant of the fact that they are not responsibly co-parenting and they're parallel parenting. Don't take it personal, the person who wants to co-parent. Don't take it personal because it's not you. They're not doing it to you. In their mind, this is their child. They can do whatever they want to do. This is their child. They're not going to harm their child. They're not going to hurt their child. They're not going to take their child somewhere dangerous. You know what I mean? So try and be understanding of that. And to the person who is parallel parenting, you need to learn how to communicate. You need to learn how to, you know, out of courtesy, call the parent that wants to co-parent and say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm letting you know that at this time we're going to be da-da-da. By that time, we should be back. We're going to be going to this place. For the person who parallel parents, it's because they don't want to ask permission and they feel that they don't have to ask permission. And, you know, to a certain degree, they're right. But within the confines of the situation of two parents, one child, they're not right. But that's what it is. You know, so again, communication is big. Communication is big. And Another thing I've noticed or learned is it's important to be able to listen to each other. Sometimes one person will give an apology. It may not be the way you want the apology to come through, but in parenting, accept the apology. The person says, hey, I'm sorry, or look, I apologize. Accept it because it all boils down to the benefit and the nurturing and the well-being and the growth of the child. It may not be what you want, but don't forget, 23 chromosomes came from you, 23 chromosomes came from the other. If the child is adopted, both of y'all put forth in the process, you know, you're both sharing the responsibility of rearing this child. Um, it may not be a 50-50, it may be a 30-70, even if you're in a, the same household. You know, we're being real here. But communication is key, understanding is key, forgiveness is key, because it's all for the betterment and the health of the child. Okay? And guess what? My sister also mentioned this. Kind of after seven years old, you know, eight, nine, then the communication doesn't really have to happen between the other person if you're not still together, you know what I mean? But during those formative years, absolutely. Communication is important. So that was just a thought, guys. So sound off. Let me know your opinions. Talk to me. Love you, my Marshall Blunders. And I'll be uploading a hair video pretty soon. I just had this weekend be very slow. I only had about three clients. I didn't really record because I was in a chill and relaxed mood, which obviously <laughs> still in my chill and relaxed mood. But uh, yeah, starting Monday, I'll be back to normal. I love you guys. Keep on blending.